Hello everyone, Mr. Nacho here and today I wanted to bring you the patch notes. It just dropped 39 minutes ago. I hope that you will enjoy it and let's go. First of all, they have added an event that's called Aberration Domination Event. You will need to collect the corrupted shards, a rare material, then you need to head over to Dwell and you can trade the corrupted shards for corrupted versions of some special weapons. I'm not entirely sure what it means yet, I'll just have to jump into it, I'm just downloading the patch right now. In general, performance and crashes are supposed to be improved in different fights. Uh, the performance in Mother Mind is nice because it was kind of laggy. The quality of life, general, this is one of the most important fixes and improvements that they've made. Uh, the, the detection right now should be client-sided in multiplayer games. Uh, instead of server-sided. So whenever you connect to the host, usually it would uh, detect in his game whether you have dodged, taking into account all of the lag and everything. But right now, it should take into account whether you have dodged it on your screen. So it should be your client that decides whether you have dodged the attack or not. So this should increase the responsiveness and the fluidity of the game tremendously in multiplayer. The joining of the multiplayer lobbies now also should just spawn you into the world instead of in the spectator mode. And they have finally done it after years of waiting. They have added loadouts that we've been asking for since Remnant 1 came out. This is huge. This is one of the best information that I've received all day. And I hope that they will continue the great work. This is insanely nice. Then they follow up that they wanted this patch to be mainly about the armor and damage reduction and trinkets. So this we can skip and let's go to the armor. Adjusted armor to weight ratio for all armor sets. So right now, if there was the, the calculator for the armor to weight ratio, it's now useless, we will have to figure out a new way or the calculator will have to be updated. We'll just have to wait and see, but more armors have just become viable than just Leto, MK2 and all of the heaviest pieces that you can find basically or the labyrinth gloves and so on and so on. Right now we'll see much more variety. I'm not sure whether this will replace the need for the transmogrification entirely. It's a step in the right direction. Then there are traits. The only trait that was changed is strong pack. It basically just went from minus 10 encumbrance to plus 15 weight class threshold, uh, which is basically in most cases just minus 15 encumbrance if you want to be technical. Uh, it has some niche differences, but they are not really that important unless you are going for a like um, tank unarmed build or something like this. You won't notice the difference except for the buff of 5 points, which is 50%. That's a lot. Then we have the gear and items. Leto's amulet, twisted idol, alchemy stone. These are all very nice and not really used all that often. I'm not sure that let's say alchemy stone increasing the life steal by one percent or increasing this armor boost from 30 to 35 percent whether this will actually make a difference but this is a test of how many items will be used they have the data i assume and they somehow manage to test how many items are being used and who is using what and i think that this is just to test the waters and whether this will not be enough or it will be enough, they will just have to decide later on and then act on the feedback that they will receive. So if you want to voice your opinion somewhere, come to the Discord that will be in the description below and let them know. There is an entire channel just dedicated for general suggestions and there is another one for balance purposes. You can voice your concerns or just tell them that this was a good job. If you want to have any say in what's going on and what's going to be changed in this game, this would be the only way. Um, I will just leave you with the link to this subreddit and this patch notes so you can go through all of the ones that you might be interested in. But I'll just go through the ones that I think are the most important. So uh, first thing, Blessed Ring. It's incredibly nice. It, used, it gives you two stacks of bulwark it used to give it to you for 15 seconds now it's half a minute so this is a hundred percent increase it's huge it should be gr it should be great the blood tinged ring it gives you two hp per second and the range changed from 10 meters to 25 meters so it now can be used easily in ranged builds as well for 
easy to HP regeneration if you're running a blood build. Yeah, the Fae Bruiser Ring, which is only used really for melee builds, it again just gives you two stacks of bulwark. Uh, this is from 7 seconds to 15 seconds, so it's over a 100% increase, it's 8 seconds more. This is a huge difference as well if you are running melee. Uh, then the Fae Shaman Ring increased health regeneration from 0.25 to 0.334. The Vacuum Seal is also nice if you are running something like an Explorer farming build, because the range is increased from 100 to 150%. This is very nice and the shield granted is increased as well. So if you just want to run around, collect everything, multiply it and just farm stuff, then the vacuum seal is your go-to. Uh, the shield breaker mutator. Now finally we are talking. They changed it to shielding strike and the level 10 upgrade now doesn't take away your shield. It just takes into account how much shield you've got and then it deals damage based on that, but it doesn't remove the shield, does not consume the shield. This is very, very nice. This is great build for melee, for weapons that attack quickly in rapid succession. You should be able to utilize it right now way better than you used to be able in the past. Uh, for the weapons, the rune pistol mod, it's very nice as well. The, the weapon itself doesn't really deal that much damage, but whenever you create the aura right now, instead of a single burst AoE, it follows you. I'm just curious whether it will just keep following you if you change it to a different weapon. So you just enable it on the pistol and then you run around with your main weapon and then reap the benefits of of the mod itself. I think that if this is the case, then this could be a very good secondary. Uh, free healing basically, and the pistol isn't really great, but it's not bad either. Now, fixes or changes to the archetypes, the challenger rampage. It re reduces the requirement to trigger berserk from 400 basic damage to 135 per stack, and they increase the movement speed and reload speed while it's active. So it will stack up faster, so it will also expire faster and you will not have as much time in between the stacks to reap benefits from increased movement speed, reload speed and so on. But you will get the berserk state earlier. In general, it should be more balanced right now the way that it's going to be. And the Juggernaut has a very nice thing as well, reduced melee stamina cost while it's active. It's already the best melee skill in the game. Now it became even better. There is nothing to compare it to. It just got the buff that it didn't really need, but it got it anyway, so here we are. So just some fixes for the engineer, not really that important, this is important. They fixed the bug causing Rampage to deal multiplicative damage. So right now Rampage should be more in line with the Bullet Storm on the Gunslinger. So it's still a very decent skill, especially that the second fix came in, where it right now can use and can properly utilize the weapon with an element. So if you use like corrosive rounds, it will no longer reduce the damage that you deal, which is incredible. All right, and right now we have a lot of items that were bugged or that were not working properly or that were overpowered and broken. And we'll just see what they changed. The, there was an issue where Ravager's Mark bonuses were reversed. I have never encountered, encountered it myself, but this is good. They have fixed an issue where Matriarch's Insignia was not rewarding stamina correctly on kill. This is something that I run into uh, whenever I was creating my Whirlwind build. And this is a very nice buff to the Matriarch's Insignia. Right now it's comparable, at least in my opinion, to the Butcher's Fetish. It's just a different level of utility than the other one. This is a huge one as well. Fixed an issue where Stone of Malevolence and Faerun's Sigil would still generate mod power while the mod was active. So basically how you would use it is that whenever you use Nightfall and you would use Faerun's Sigil, it will continue to increase the mod power generation and accumulate the mod power while the mod was active. So whenever it ran out, you could just pop it and run it again. Same with the Stone of Malevolence, whenever you were using elemental ammo, it would just stack with itself and refill the mod power while it was active. And then you could pop it constantly and have an infinite loop of elemental ammo. I think that this filled a gap where we actually want 
some basic elemental weapons where they deal elemental damage by default but this is not the case right here and right now this might come in the future and right now the elemental ammo might no longer be a go-to for most weapons they have also fixed an issue where some weapons procced too frequently when using the bandit mutator and basically what it means is shotguns uh, because whenever they would sp shoot in a wide spread they would just have different pellets uh, hit different hitboxes then it would calculate the 30 percent chance to get back the ammo uh, separately so whenever you shot like four parts you were counting four times 30 percent which was basically almost every time guaranteed to get the ammo back and right now it should only count once no matter how many hitboxes you hit so this is a nice change this was not really all that needed because shotguns aren't all that powerful whenever they are widespread and not made into a sniper rifle basically uh, but this is not intended this was not intended and they've changed it how they see fit and i think that this is a good change and basically the rest is enemies and ui and stability and audio and miscellaneous and uh, everything else um, i think that the patch notes are a big w i think that they have nailed it for now i am looking for some more content as everyone is but this is a step in the right direction i hope that you enjoyed this if you want to once again look into the patch notes yourself the link will be in the description below thank you for listening to me for a minute and have a great day